What's going on, Sideboard Gaming family? This is your host, Caleb Williamson. What's up? It's Tim here. Hey. All righty, guys. It's been... It's going good, Tim. It's going good. I was just going to say it's been a little while since we had our uh, last podcast. Yeah. Um, I think we missed we missed a week for like, I don't know if I was sick or we had some technical issues going on. And then we planned on doing something last week and something came up again. Life happens, you know? Yeah. Um, and then also we are... You know, we, we talked about it and we are going to change to a two podcast a month schedule just so we can um, make them a little bit heftier for everyone. And um, we're still going to do videos and stuff on the off weeks, but just two podcasts a month. That way it, it not, not, not that we need a lighter schedule, but just that it like keeps them more anticipated towards if that makes any sense. Yeah, because I feel like doing it every week, there's... There's not a whole lot of new content to cover in like a podcast form. Um, yeah. So we want to keep it interesting. Yeah. That kind of so. frees us up for for other types of content also, other kinds of videos and whatnot, which is kind of fun. Yeah. So anyways, uh, that's been kind of exciting. I have been doing a lot more Patreon articles um, because of, you know, life events recently. I got unemployed. And so I've had a lot more time on my hands um, and a lot of them are free. So if you guys haven't checked it out, go check it out on our Patreon. Um, but other than that, how have you been, Tim? I know you said you were kind of busy and we both got our second COVID shot, which is just hitting us like trucks. Uh, yeah, I I got my second one yesterday and that thing bulldozed me. Dude, uh, it wrecked me too. Yeah, it. I mean, I still recommend people get it. I know there's the new Johnson and Johnson one that's just a one and done. Yeah, that one only really knocks you for like 24 to 36 hours. But mm -hmm. with stuff opening back up, got to get vaxxed. Yeah. Anyways, um, we just wanted to update you guys with our set 13 first impressions. Uh, what decks we've been testing and kind of the results we've been seeing from the set and what over what the overall impact we think it's going to make kind of on the meta and so um, without further ado Tim do you want to take us off with uh, set 13 just kind of as a whole what you're expecting you know kind of like what how many boxes you want to get and then just go into the deck you're playing and then we'll we'll switch over to me for a bit yeah so um I was I was excited for the set pretty early on with the reveals. Uh, yeah, granted they were non-official reveals, the ones that I got excited for. <laughs> that's besides the point. Um, as you know, and I'm sure most of our listeners know, if there's a playable black deck that gets revealed, I'm on it. I'm brewing like right away. Uh, <sighs> Never, it's never what changed, I Tim. Yeah. You never change. They just keep making good black aggro stuff. So, I mean, I might as well play it. Um, but that being said, Supreme Kai is busted. Supreme Kai. Oh, my gosh. Um, that deck is, uh, mono Black Storm else, is hot. I guess it's green black because we do play eight green cards. Eight green. You don't need, well, you don't actually charge them. That's true. I don't think. It, I mean, are there any cards like if you had to charge one, would it matter? No, I don't think so. Only the super combo. But I was thinking about changing the super combo, anyways. Um, yeah. Which I guess I can get into a tiny bit. So I tested the deck quite a bit so far. I've made tiny, like one or two card adjustments here and there after every few games. Yeah. I still think that the hyper aggro version of the deck is probably where you want to be. But uh -huh. after testing like a variety of matchups, I feel like there there might be something in like the mid range department where like maybe you splash in like beans and a few other blue cards. Maybe you go like the um the overrealm trunks that grabs a vanilla two drop and plays it and gives it crit. Maybe you play some blue oh, yeah. ones. Um, yeah, that would 
Because it opens up good. some extension for you with blue, which I feel like if you can capitalize on extending in that deck, it's insane. Because you yeah. you go from zero to a hundred real quick. So have you? One of the issues that that brings to my mind is that um, floodgates are a big issue. Mm -hmm. Just like uh, tr trunks heroic boss, trunks heroic prospects, topo violent rays. Um, how do you think the deck deals with those? I mean, obviously topo is probably the easiest to deal with. You can just swing through it. Um, but like other cards. How do you feel like so, the deck can deal with those? So like heroic prospects, not a huge deal because usually they can't play it until turn two or three anyways. So if they do it on turn two, that means they played their unison and already have awoken to untap so they can use it. Uh -huh. Or I guess they could demagic, whatever. Um, that's fine. It's only one turn off. Because I usually spend the first three turns unawakened anyways. That way I can uh -huh. I can get enough in my drop to manipulate my overrealms on like turns three and four. Because that's kind of your more consistent kill turn. Um, I got you. With that being said, like if someone goes heroic prospects on three, a lot of your your free overrealms are redrops anyways. Yeah. So you've got yeah, yeah. you've got your trunks that draw cards, the go tens that's just a bad Turles. Um the Beerus that you can play off of it is also a three drop. It doesn't hurt that bad. Uh Violent Rays also doesn't really touch the deck that much. Um mm -hmm. I think the only real floodgates that are hard to get through would be like Nimbus or uh, Dormant. But green's not seeing a whole lot of play, so it doesn't matter that much. Uh, Nimbus yeah. is kind of tough, though. You just have to honestly play into it and force them to have it like you've always had to do, which is yeah, fine. Nimbus, Nimbus has always been the one where like you can still get a good amount of attacks <laughs> through. And then you can... like. Uh, Chris Welch put it a good way. He said that in a storm deck, Nimbus like just compresses your attacks, if that makes sense. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you have a chomp or whatever, it just means you have to swing like 25 and 35 Ks and then, you know, go all in if they're low life. Yeah, uh, it just means you go taller instead of wider. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I think Dormant is basically the same way. You just only get two attacks. Yeah. I will say, so, for anyone who's thinking about playing Kai, the Demigre Unison is snapped in half. Oh my god. Bro, that card's busted. That it like it's it's minus three or whatever it is. You can just ignore the text on that. <laughs> All you care about is when you overrealm burst one and get wormhole. And then you can plus one to put two overrealm fodder back into your drop. Yeah, so you you uh, you, you, you can three back. Yeah. So if you go like your first overrealm is like revive ravager, you burst three off of that, then burst one for the auto on the unison, put two back from your initial overrealm, you're at six. Oh my god, this man on a mission. Yeah. Now you've got revive one. ravager and man on a mission on turn one going turn second. One. That's three crit they're taking. Yeah. Because I don't so, care how small my hand gets, I will combo on those. Well, yeah, depending on, you know, what they got and such. But um, now we had a little playtesting session with the team over the weekend. We did. And um, one of our other teammates, Brandon Cavan, had the deck as well. Correct. And he was playing the more traditional, what kind of the community is on, this like mid-range type thing that's supposed to awaken early and just stick all of its threats because uh, turn one you can awaken with Majin Buu surprise attack or whatever it's called. Extinction attack, human extinction. Yeah. Because you mill the four and then all that, you know, all that jazz. I know you disagree that that is the correct play because turn one, you like you said, you can get, if you just see your units you can get like you know three three to five damage off potentially 
Yeah, so in one turn. And we we played that mirror match also, and I think Kevin kind of realized what I had been trying to hammer into him that the turn one awaken is is not where you want to be. Uh, for the sole reason that that means you only have bursted three cards, and that's what you have to work with for your overwhelms for the entire game. Yeah, yeah. I don't care if you're a fifteen k. I still get to burst, which means I can use bigger overwhelms now. Right. And especially if you are, if you're leaning into the new secret, Robelu, you want as many black battle cards as possible that you can put back into your drop because it's a dark overrealm. Right. Yeah. And so one of the concepts I was thinking about, like after that day when we were testing was, um, I don't know what your list is at card wise, but do you think you could run an extinction attack or two as the fifth and sixth copy of your unison like oh man i didn't hit unison in turn one so we're just gonna go extinction attack for the, uh, just for the like the extra mill or something you know what i mean potentially i've been i've been tweaking the deck a little bit um uh, making other versions of it um something also revolving around changing the super combo to the old was it set three or set four the old kai that's like the sparking one but for your warp yeah if you have 10 in warp it's a zero 10 draw one is it 10 uh i could have sworn it was a less. number that you can easily get by like yeah. turn two. i don't i don't remember the exact number i'm I think gonna it look right 10. now because i'm curious yeah um but yeah, so you were thinking of changing that super combo because it's essentially a sparking super combo for your deck. and uh, It's also live turn one most of the time. Yeah. Where is right. our super combo? There we go. Uh, five. Five. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Dude, you, that's... That easy turn one. Yeah, easy. Um, Yeah, so that helps you protect high because I feel like if you protect high, you want... You want to awaken based off of your warp, I feel like, not your life, because that'll force uh -huh. you to go down to six. And that means you can, you're not locked out of your super combos, one, but two, that means you can use your backside effect to keep your overrealms from six life instead of from four. So you'll be going from six to five instead of from four to three for the first time you use that effect. And that's... That's a really important aspect of the matches. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So I, I'm leaning towards changing the super combo and making the deck function a little bit better around that. As, as weird as it sounds, I feel like with that deck, the, the super combo kind of makes or breaks the list. Yeah, I mean, like, it's tough, right? Because you want to run the one that's, like, the overall best, right? So you, you want to run the Vegeta. Mm -hmm. But the problem with Vegeta is you're not at four life very quick uh, in some matchups. Like, a lot of matchups, it's not going to matter. You're going to be at four life, like, super quick. Yeah. But then in, in the ones that you're not, like, probably against Invoker and stuff like that, you're really going to want to be able to just shotgun your whole hand yeah, because black honestly doesn't have that much self awakening outside of BMS. BMS yeah, I don't even so, think I was playing BMS in my list. You don't really need it, right? And so if you know you don't have that game one against certain decks that aren't swinging at you, the Kai is just going to be so good. Like you're going to yeah. swing, and they're going to be like, you know, they're going to ask cards in hand. You probably have like six or seven. And uh, your, your shotgun can end up being like 90k. Yeah, I will say probably your like first two turns, you're going to have a small hand. Yeah. I think most of the games I played, uh, when I ended my first turn, normally I had either three or four cards in hand. Most of the time, I think it was three. And then it was like the same amount at the end of turn two. I had three or four cards in hand. So but do you then, think the deck is going to be weak to hand control? I don't really think hand control is going to be in the meta, to be honest. <laughs> okay, what about like a green deck that just ribs you turn two or something? 
I mean, that's always scary, but like there were there were a couple game. games where I went down to like one or two cards in hand because I like I matter. drew the the aggressive nut and so I had no cards in hand. Yeah, and uh, it was against Benny when he was playing TN, and I still like oh, okay. shotgunned him down to like three life on turn two. Yeah. Well, did you close out the game? Because uh, it does matter. No, because I didn't draw any more overrealms. Oh. <laughs> yeah. If that's, I had drawn funny. a single overrealm, we would have been cool. Because <laughs> you you have to have one every turn. Yeah. To like start your chain. Right. Um, so what about running like a cool one of... Um, oh, dude. What's the name of that card? So there's this Trunks from when overrealm first came out. And he's overrealm... Are you three, talking about the say. one that goes back to your hand? Yes. I think it's over on two. Yeah, it's like a cool one of, bro. It's like, oh, I, you know, I, if you see it, it just stays in your hand. You over on every turn. Quick blade trunks over on nope. two. Yeah, no matter what, you're just overwhelming. And Wait, if you like. Maybe not that one. No, no, no. That that one's a free overrealm for two. Oh, yeah. This this one's three, I'm pretty three sure. Drop. Where are I know it. oh. Unrelenting assault trunks. There we go. Yeah. Auto when this card is sent to the wart from your battle area or deck, add it to your hand. Boom. Maybe. There you go. Maybe that maybe like the one. It feels so bad. It does, but if you absolutely just have to have an overrealm. I mean overrealm, draw you a card. Get That's a swing true. at it first yeah maybe could be good potentially maybe we'll right. we'll try that one out in one of our versions maybe you just need to run more foo because food yeah i started at overwhelm. two and it was not good enough. enough i went up to three and i still feel like maybe it should go to four because it gets from drop or warp right <laughs> yeah yeah so it's like up literally... to a seven cost in that deck, it's literally pay to tutor your deck. Basically. Card, except secret. Yes, but we have um, Dark power, power overseeing time for that. Yeah, that, that card's getting played a lot more right now. I'm and literally it's... playing three of it in case I burst my secret. Jeez. Because I'm going to say this full on the record, and I know this is going to suck later on but Robelu is absolutely busted it's not okay that card is dumb every time I, I've played it it's ended up getting me like four extra attacks besides itself if I, not I more think, I don't even think that's the strongest part of the card <laughs> oh yeah there's the hidden mode I forgot existed because usually people died the turn it was played I'm more scared of that part than anything else. Sacking yeah, over just, the gate and attack. Yeah, and you know, just play this tag team go on for free. That's pretty dumb. Yep. Uh free negate and a blocker. Hey, I shotgunned you with my secret and um I have five negates on board. That's pretty good. Is That's is awesome. really good. The secret was made specifically for that deck. But I it's probably it still very a, good in other decks. Yeah, it could fit into a couple other things, but, you know, basically that deck. Uh, yeah, also, it just it looks sick. The secretary. The secretary is putting in work. <laughs> overtime. It's overtime. That's what it's called. Yeah, it. I think that's probably going to be the, the best one out of the set. I don't know. I think this the sin is just more generically good. It's that one's yeah, it's really generic, but the problem with that one is like it's also kind of awkward. What does it replace? Like is the thing it repl it's replacing it doesn't. Like is it better than Selzino in, you know, cuz you can run that card in Sin, you can run it in like Toa, you can well, run like, it in a couple other decks. If you're playing Sin, you're locked into two secrets. If you're playing Control, you're playing the the other sin secret, the infinite blocker. If yeah. you're playing an aggro, a combo deck that goes to Selzino, you on turn two, then you're playing Selzino. There's not really any other option. 
for right. that deck at least. Yeah, maybe it's you know you're a newer player and you didn't have Salzino and you pull this card or something. You run it. If you're a newer player and you're playing Sin Shenron, you spent a grand on that deck. Well, he could have bought other decks that are probably better for well, the same price. Grand. It's not a grand these days. The aggro yeah. version, yeah. Well, all the stuff it? from from set twelve, the Nuovas and Rages and all that, and then the I the new promos. Up. I think they went up because I bought them when they were like four or five a piece. They have gone like, up. They're all like ten to fifteen or twenty. Plus the the new eight drop promos. Those are also Those are a lot. They're like forty a piece. And sell Zeno. Okay. You get, it gets up there bucks. quick. Uh, you know, my collection really likes when decks just randomly jump to like a thousand dollars, and I'm like, so hey, I have I have that whole deck. That reminds so, me of a time like a couple years ago, right after I started playing, and we had this conversation. It was like after the first time one of my decks got hit, and I was like. Why don't I just play yellow? They'd never touch it. Outside of Bardock. Yeah, Storm. They banned like half the deck. But they could have been in any color and that would have happened. That wasn't a yellow thing. That was a Storm thing. Honestly, that deck did not exemplify what yellow does. No. So, yeah, it but, could have been. But the moral anything. of the story is yellow just like doesn't get touched and they just keep getting like super insanely dumb cards and they never get touched and then they get super expensive for no reason and then there's me sitting over there playing black aggro decks and it's like ban 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 <laughs> I miss you Turles <clears throat> And child's wish. You know, I I don't I stop laughing on the outside, but I don't stop laughing on the inside about that situation. I, know. I really I should just I should just sell out into yellow. Let's do it, bro. But then the problem just, is, uh, does yellow start getting banned because I'm playing it now? Well, you only need one yellow deck. There's only That's one. True. There. Sin, only Sin need, Shenron. Uh, or Mecha, which I have like the whole deck. Mecha's trash. Even I played Mecha when we had our little team testing thing. It was it was weird. I did play a I mean, mirror match without the what is it SS4 Annihilator or whatever. That card's a the anti mirror card. Yeah, I forgot yeah, about that when I was building it. <clears throat> it's a it's a big dumb card. Uh, that's why I, that's why I lost. <laughs> but we yeah. also found out. I have a new love for playing Invoker. Invoker is a lot like old sin. It is just like, a lot of fun. Hey, cool. You didn't kill me. Well, uh, hey, uh, you're dead. Yeah. Sick. I mean, it's just burning someone for like five or six life on turn five is pretty insane. But also when you set it up and you're like, actually, let me look at your hand first. To see if I just want to apex you instead. <laughs> yeah. Because you always have them both. Unless you don't own well, apex. Yikes. I'm glad I never I, sold it. I regret everything. Bro, that was rough. You sold it and literally the next day it like tripled in price. Yep. I sold it for a solid $120. And then it went to like four hundred, and now it's like a thousand. That was back during the uh, the days of when U three got banned. Yeah, when Invoker yeah. was looking like like a hot pile of poo going into set ten, and then <laughs> surprise, it wasn't. Hey, I just want to say an accomplishment. You know, a little tick on that resume there. Uh, I beat U three Vegex with Invoker pre U three ban once one out of 50 games we literally yes, played we 50 we probably played games. like 200 games of me playing u3 vegex and you just playing everything Different that things. the community said this is the counter and Dude, you won a game 
That's the most amount of testing I did in a single like one on one match. I have never like, seen I, you so tilted either. Okay. When well, like I get it though. Yeah. It was just like honestly what that taught me was never trust what the community says as an absolute ever. Yeah. Um the term Vegex killer or Vegex Slayer was thrown around way too willy nilly. <laughs> well people played it different than you did like when we first Bro, started turn, it was like turn two is the last turn <laughs> yeah until you get nimbus for like three more turns and then turn five is the last turn once you're unlocked and you can attack is go time the one game I did win it was really funny because it felt like I was in like a like like white water rafting or something and <laughs> Vegex is the water and I'm the raft and every time he flips the boat right but then this one time I'm like nah nah and I stabilize the boat flips you I stabilize and I'm like boy and then I finally got it out you know you got literally Vegeta drew like that. you had like the god draws I think I drew like the one in a million everything. sequence of draws that allow you like, to win hey, that game it happened and I won. Let's That's do fine. It again. I'll still and take it those didn't. odds. I think I just didn't ever play that matchup again because I was like, no, nope, I'm retiring. Yeah. I, I will say the most annoying matchup we tried was one of the topo lists. Yeah, was where it, you can only play one was battle it card. topo. I think it was. Maybe it wasn't. It might have been. Uh, I know you were Frieza. playing that that Vegeta Unison, and that was the annoying part. No, I think it was Unison. Topo. But yeah, no, it was Topo. Because I had to the kill the one. Unison and then hope you didn't have another one for the next turn. Yeah, yeah, that was annoying. Was just... I still clapped those cheeks. Yeah, but it was annoying. It was like it was like it's the same thing with like Dark Boy, right? And I tell a lot of people this on our team. It's like. Okay, you have the floodgate, right? If you do not apply pressure after the floodgate, your floodgate was useless. Yes, all you did was waste time. All you did was waste time, literally. And so it was like that with that Topo deck. It was like, at first the list was playing two Vegetas, and I was like, this is not enough. And I played three, and I was like, this is not enough. And I played four, and I was like, cool. If I get all four back to back, I might have a chance. And then it didn't happen. Yeah, so I had no board. Yeah, um, and then I was like, "Oh, that was just right, annoying because it turned a five-minute game into a twenty-minute game <laughs> with the same result." <laughs> yeah, it was great though, because all it did was like let me stockpile like a gigantic hand and drop to just like absolutely go ape shit on the I turn remember. that I was no longer locked up. Yeah. Yeah, I missed that deck days. though. That was fun. I like that. Yeah. I like, I like the ability to play degenerate strategies. I think it's totally fine in every game. You should be allowed to. I'm telling you, degenerate control is King Vegeta. That's coming out. I already that is it. super fun. We already have the secret tech. Yes, SS3 Nappa. No, that's not the secret <laughs> tech. But yes, we do. Just, I. I just want to see someone just straight up one turn at a time, eight to zero, somebody without attacking. Yeah, okay, uh, deal, but they reprint the card with deflect instead of crit. Maybe. Then it's guaranteed take a damage. Well, the only thing that would stop it from burning is God Sealing. And like, yes, there's only no. like one blue deck that gets played. Yeah, black has a couple of counterplays, but they're not super played. You mean the one that doesn't even stop the auto? No, Rebellion Hammer. Four or less warp it. People play that? Yeah, because they're afraid of Topo. Bro, that's what Koitsukai is for. Well, I'm just telling you what they play. Okay, Dakota did it to me the other day. In his hatch deck. How did that go? Uh, well, I, I showed him Napa and I said, um, I have Deflect. 
was it the the Napa that we experimented with? The it's four the drop Napa. Yes, the big yes. one. Yes. And that thing Napa is sweet. Kept, and then Napa was like hatch leader. Don't care about that. Smack, smack. Yeah. It was yeah. yeah. Okay, so all right, now on to you. Yes, yes. So before I go into my King Vegeta deck that I've been playing, uh, I was super stoked in set 12 announcements where they said they were doing box stoppers like set 10 with SPRs and SRs. Thank you, Bandai. That was Uh, probably the greatest product release idea you've ever had. Do that for all of them. It's literally the best ever because the boxes like feel terrible when you're like five SRs. But when you're like six SRs, it just, I don't know why. It just feels better to get that one more. Well, it, I mean, it also feels a lot better when you buy a lot of product. Yeah, because you're like we tend like to your, do your play sets and all that. Yeah. Because I mean, I feel like the last probably four or five sets, they've increased the number of SRs in a set definitely which gives you more variety in what you open which means it's harder to pull your play sets yeah i mean it's a lot of you know you used to see beard doing the the collection yeah your collections and stuff and that was back when we had like 16 srs a set now we have upwards of 24 and so it's literally like impossible to get a master set out of a case. You, you could get like one maybe, but then you're having to charge like he was only charging like 400 bucks for a master set outside of secrets. Yeah. And like you don't even get that in a case anymore sometimes. I mean, you do with like SPRs and SRs mixed, but you'd have to figure out how to sell them and whatever. Because like with and, set uh, 10, we both had a case of set 10. And neither one of us pulled a complete master set. No, I was missing some of the Shenron SRs, which are So was I, and a few others. Um, And that was with the extra box topper SRs included. So imagine, like, without those. Right, exactly. So anyways, super excited for that. And um, we will be ordering a whole bunch of products, so... Uh, if you guys are doing the same, make sure to check out our affiliate link if you want to do online orders or if you're in the uh, state of California, Central Valley, City of Fresno, anything like that, check out our sponsor over at Ender's Games in, uh, pretty sure they're in Clovis, technically. Yeah, I think but, the website is endersgamesclovis.com, but we'll have it linked regardless. Yeah, so go check them out. Um, they do local orders and stuff, so uh, just support support them. Because they support us. So, okay. So, getting into my deck, I chose to pick up King Vegeta for this next set. Uh, we divvied up all the decks as our team. That way, we split up the testing a little bit and it just makes things easier on everyone else. And so, I was kindly surprised because King Vegeta is not the typical red play style. It's and not your style of deck either. No, not at all. But I do have to say I love it. Uh, King Vegeta is like this deck where you're playing this game of uh, on your opponent's turn, you summon a little guy on their board. It crits them a life. They draw a card. And then on your turn, you can summon one on your board, but its skills are negated. And then you have like these three drops that can get rid of uh, one of the one drops on either player's board, summon themselves, and you can go up the chain into, you know, five drops and so forth. And all of these cards, there's three different chains, Broly, Vegeta, and Goku. Um, They're all like a different purpose. You know, one's got Deflect, one's got Barrier, one's got Double Strike, whatever. And so the deck's like this interesting sort of mini game of, you know, find the pieces sort of thing, as well as you're controlling your opponent's life. You're critting them. They get the draw, which is cool. Like, so they essentially remain parity with the hand advantage from taking the damage, but they are just critting life Mm -hmm. every every turn. So like if they don't awaken by turn four, they are awakened by turn four. And so um, it kind of creates this sort of control deck because 
you don't have to actually play the game or play the like a, the aggressive game until you know turn three turn four but then you also have like these sort of stacks pieces and as stacks is like when your cards make it more difficult for your opponent's cards to play the game yeah uh, for, for example like the brawly he says when he's on your opponent's board they crit one and then they draw one and then every turn after uh, he lands whenever they play a battle card they have to warp a card from their hand until the end of their turn so it's like it costs them every card costs them another card once per turn and so i just like it it's a control deck it's kind of a slower deck but it has a lot of tools and a lot of like uh it has all it checks all the boxes you know mm -hmm. like when you're looking in a new archetype you know you got deflect barrier aggressive defensive all that stuff yeah it feels like like you kind of want to hammer down on the like denying them the resource of their life but like i don't know if you've thought about it i just thought about it right now but like is there any sort of world where maybe you slot in like the old chain zeno package so intensifying because you can crit them and then you can go chain attack zeno um because they'll pr they're probably holding resources because they can't really do much right mm -hmm. so you shuffle it all away it puts your guys on their board back in your deck because they all have unique right yeah most of them yes except what the raditz the raditz and the goku are not unique okay but it, like it's like a reset button so like if you want the initial if you want the effect again or whatever um or like depending on how many of like the three drops you've already seen it gives you better odds to like draw into the ones you would need again uh-huh i don't know maybe it's not the way it was just a thought i had uh, yeah it's i mean it's still interesting you know something to like control their hand um one of the things with the deck it kind of does a similar concept already in a way the three drop brawly is really good and uh, there's been many 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 complaints that the card should have unique uh not unique but like unique or once per turn or whatever he essentially you pay a red you sack a well you don't sack you bottom deck a brawly or a raditz they all can do their character or raditz from either player's board bottom deck it pay the one red play him he's got barrier and when he enters you get to look at your opponent's hand as long as you have two energy and they're tapped out you look at their hand take a 15k or less battle card it's gone until the end of their next turn yeah he's so not one like per a, turn like a one literally turn thoughtsies yeah you literally just like there it was insane how many turns where i wasn't being pressured that i would do my field spell to um, activate me and get a brawly to my board uh well depending on who goes first because the deck really likes going second because on their turn before they even draw turn one turn zero basically you summon a dude to their board and they crit a life so you summon a brawly over there and then they do their thing and then on your turn you summon a brawly to your board and then um it's better when you're going first because turn two you, they have one energy but essentially turn two you get have two brolies you play two of the three drops and you take two cards from their hand because if you have two energy and they have one assuming they're tapped out because most decks tap out on turn one um it's just like a pretty devastating play because then that means on their turn two they're down two cards you have two 19k swings and then going into your turn three you can either go to the five drop brawly or the uh, three drop Vegeta or Goku, which are also really good. And so like the deck just has so many routes of play that you can do based on what you're playing against. I feel like it has to be good. You know, I feel like it's going to splash in the meta for sure. Yeah. I mean, the games we played and then the ones that I saw part of you playing when we were testing this last weekend, it definitely seems like it's going to be a good deck. Um, yeah. I feel like it's going to be it's the type of deck that is designed to punish your opponent 
no matter right. what they're doing. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I get, we'll see if that's enough. Because I feel like it's kind of dependent on how the rest of the meta shapes up. Yeah, I feel like if it's a storm meta, then it might not be the greatest deck in the world because I don't know. It just doesn't like do a whole lot of free stuff early turns. You actually have to tap out and all that sort of thing. Um, but it will be interesting to see how it shapes up. I think that the biggest decision you have to make with the deck is whether you want to end your top line with like you know three of each of the five drops or whatever mm -hmm. or you can run um the gogeta chain which is what i started with where you run three of the five drop gogeta br and three of the six drop gogeta br because all the goku and vegetas in that line they are brs well they're all brs including the brawly yeah but that that's not super relevant um so you can fuse basically yeah and being able to to do that also opens up the red broly secret. Yeah, also, I was otherwise, originally... go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I was saying I was originally playing that, but I changed it out. To what? Uh, so I changed it out to the new one, the Unison. Okay. And um, it felt like it wasn't the right card for the deck. It. It comes down on turn four, you have to tap out. And the King Vegeta deck, it probably is awakening before that because when your opponent realizes that you're critting their life down to four, then they're going to start taking their life as a resource, like self awakening essentially. Yeah. And so, and since you awaken when either player is at four life, uh, sometimes it becomes much earlier than turn four. And so, like, you're essentially always tapping out for that unison, and it's not like the biggest game finisher in the world. Yeah. Um, I can understand that. I feel like I, I don't know what the right secret is for the deck. I started trying out the heroin one. I haven't used it yet, but I feel like it's really, really. I mean, you were saying it a while ago. It's, I think it's really, really underrated in control decks if you don't own like Kai essentially, or if you just want a different flavor than Kai. Yeah, I feel like if you don't own and don't want to spend like four or five hundred dollars on the Kai secret, pick up the, the heroine's lineage secret because that card will literally just steal you a game. Yep, they won't steal anything. Activate battle. Just about anything. Seven, Seven or less. And which is most carry. things. Um, yeah, it's, it's nuts. And also fun fact, which I know got highlighted in, uh, last weekend's, uh, I don't know if it was the core or the TAC webcam regional, mm -hmm. but wasn't it, was it Cameron Williams? Uh, was it Cameron who was playing, uh, Janumba? Yeah, he played Milnimba, a blue yellow list with yeah, just... with the heroin secret, which yeah. I know I was telling you about. Like since that secret got spoiled, I was like, "Oh my god, Janemba can play a secret now." Yes, it can. I don't remember how he did. I still think the idea is worth trying. Yeah, he uh, he went two one and then dropped because he had to do something or whatever. Okay. So he wasn't doing bad. Yeah, I feel like it doesn't it doesn't compete with like top top tier, but definitely like locals or even small tournaments or even if even if your goal is not necessarily to win but to make like a splash in the meta. Yeah, or to maybe just top a regional. Yeah, you could I definitely think you could do it because the only anti Janemba deck is Vegex, and it doesn't see a whole lot of play anymore. Although maybe with the new one drop ranger it might see a resurgence again mm -hmm. yeah um but yeah so that's my um experience with king vegeta so far so far in testing i am uh i think like i think i won against you barely because you made a mistake and then in all of my matches i'm undefeated i did drop a game to TN. Uh, I just got hand controlled 
made a few mistakes. But so far, I'm, I'm undefeated in all of my matches in testing. So I think the deck's really good. I think it loves leaning more into the engines that it's intended to run. And I do think that one of the biggest decisions you're going to have to make is going to be SCR and uh, negate choice. Because you can't topo if you summon a dude for free on their turn. Interesting. Yeah, so you need to run like real negates or something. Well, I guess uh, they can all let us know what they think in the comments. Yeah. Yeah, guys. Uh, if you have any decks that you're working on, just like Tim said, comment down below what you're working on. Or even if you're playing the decks that we discussed today, we're super interested to talk with you guys about any of the uh, decks you're interested in. <laughs> Or even just decks you're working on, old decks, new decks, whatever you'd like. Um, but yeah, do, Tim, do you have anything else you'd like to say? Um, not too much. I mean, I know we're going to be putting probably some more deck lists out on the Patreon this this upcoming week. Uh, there's a few I'm working on right now. Uh, I finished a couple versions of Cell Surge which are not uh, Goku's lineage decks. Surprise. What? It's like $5,000. Yeah, I know. It's wild. Um, no, I'm, I'm leaning more into the new Android 13 from Battle Evo because uh, that card is dumb. Like, real dumb. Yeah, sleeper for sure. Pick uh, them up, guys. Yeah. I, I was testing a few, a few lists with that. Um, one of them will definitely be uploaded for free. I might do an in-depth write-up on the other one after I do some testing. I don't know. Maybe they'll both be free. Who knows? We'll find out. Yeah. Keep an eye on the Patreon though, guys. Always uh, putting up new content there. If there's any decks you guys want us to try and build or brew, let us know. We're, we, 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 uh, yeah, we will try and hit whichever ones you guys like. We also try and hit at least one of each deck, uh, in a set, but sometimes there are a lot. I haven't even touched like red Bardock yet, but we'll get there. We'll get there. I think that's going to be a storm deck. That's what the word is on the street. So uh, we'll good see. old turn one awaken. Yeah. Yep. All right. This is Sideboard Gaming, and I'm Caleb. This is Tim checking out. See ya. Peace.